Hello to all of my Calc 1 students here at Pellissippi State this fall. Uh, my name is Jonathan Lamb. I'm the lead professor of calculus at Pellissippi State. Uh, I absolutely love teaching this class. Uh, I have a lot of fun doing it all the time. Uh, this semester will be a new one for me. I uh, haven't ever taught a completely online calculus class before. Uh, had a little bit of experience, of course, in the spring, uh, finishing up a calculus class uh, after spring break online. So I've tried to perfect my techniques and hopefully you'll be the benefit of my trial and error in, in the spring as to how to get material across uh, in a good fashion. Uh, so let me go ahead and show you my plans for how our class is going to be run this fall. Uh, I've done some good work already and unlike some of your classes, you may have teachers that already have the class set forth all of the content already prepared. That's not the case with, with this class. I will be doing it on a day-to-day -day basis, but I promise I'll always stay uh, ahead of where you're supposed to be in the class. So you'll always have any resource available at any time that you need it if you don't get too far ahead of the recommended pace. Uh, I will guarantee that I will stay at least a week or two ahead. Uh, okay, so going ahead and sharing my screen here with you. Yeah. All right, so this pops up and shows you our uh, Brightspace uh, uh, class page for uh, what I plan to be working with you. And a couple of important things here that I'll need you to do as soon as possible, ho hopefully the first day of the class. Uh, of course, you need to be able to be able to show me how that you're working online homework problems and stuff. That's all through the Achieve Homework Management System. As you registered for the class, uh, along with the tuition, uh, you were charged $55 access fee, uh, and that gave you access to this Achieve Online Homework system. Uh, and it's going to have all of the, of course, homework assignments that you'll be able to work, and it, re it regenerates unique problems for each and every one of you. Uh, and then it will also have your ebook there as well. So that's the absolute first thing that I need you to do, and the registration is supposed to be extremely easy. Uh, all you'll have to do, and I'll, I'll show you in just a minute, is you'll go into our course content page, and right after my beginning of semester papers, I have the link for the Achieve system. You're supposed to start on the student registration. You click that link, and it should auto-enroll you into the Achieve class. It's supposed to understand your Pellissippi username and password and immediately register you in. Please let me know at, at the earliest time if you have any trouble with this. We have to make sure that you're in that class because that's how you're going to show me that you're doing all of the work throughout the semester since we're not meeting. Um, now, just a couple of things I'll, I'll, I'll talk about before I go to that content page. Uh, like I said, uh, I am Jonathan Lamb. I'm lead professor of calculus at Pellissippi State. Uh, I do look forward to working with you in this class. Uh, please let me know at any time. Uh, if you have a question, comment, if you need my help, I'm very approachable, guys. Uh, I absolutely love my job. I would always say in a, in a normal classroom that, uh, that I never come to school and say, oh, gosh, I'm, I'm you know, dragging in today. I, I didn't want to be here. I am. That is the opposite of me. There has never, ever, ever been a day where I haven't been thrilled to be teaching calculus. I absolutely love math. Well, not just calculus, but all math. Uh, but I absolutely love all math and I like helping people. Uh, so this job for me, it's a blessing. Uh, so I will never, ever, uh, resent you contacting me for help or anything like that. Uh, I welcome it. I love my job. I like helping you. So please, please don't, don't uh, hesitate to contact me. I give you my cell phone information in the syllabi. 
Uh, and I also uh, will very quickly answer my, my email address. I, I, actually, I gave you my cell phone number right, right here as well, email and cell phone address. Either one, I will always uh, answer any question the day it's asked. Well, unless you email me like at 1130 at night, then no. Uh, but now I do want to, to see uh, you succeed and I will do everything I can to help ensure that that happens. Uh, cannot help you if you don't ask me for help though. Uh, so especially in this type of class, uh, I can't uh, stand right there beside you and see if what you're doing is right or wrong. I won't know uh, on a daily basis. So it's up to you to be proactive if and when you need help and seek it out, whether it's with working with me or the tutoring center. Uh, we will have some other options. I hope you'll choose me as your first option for help. Uh, now, let me go ahead and I will view this as it should appear on your screen. It, it's very similar to what mine looks like. But now we'll go into the content page. Now on this content page, uh, let, let me go ahead and first talk about the achieve before I go into the policy sheet and the calendar because that's what I need you to get into as soon as possible. On the Achieve, if you hit this Student Registration Start Here button, whenever you do that, it should automatically load up this screen right here. You'll notice mine already went to my, my screen. Now, mine says get to know your students. It recognizes me as the instructor for the class, uh, so I don't think you'll have that pop up. Uh, over here on the Achieve system, uh, you'll have your grade book, your reports, your ebook. Uh, so the entire book for the class, you can see in through here, throughout all of the chapters in there. Uh, another thing, uh, when you go to my course, it's first going to load up the assignments, which it's, it's a bit misleading. I only have three assignment dates throughout the very beginning or th throughout the semester. Uh, the first one is just, I need you to work a training assignment to make sure you know how to answer questions on Achieve. The due date for that is September 4th, so uh, at, at least 10 days for the very first assignment. Uh, and then you'll notice that the next big block of assignments from 1.1 all the way through 3.6, those have a due date of October 16th. Uh, that's uh, going to be after our first test. Our first test, you'll be meeting with me in person on October 9th or taking it in the testing center. I'll talk more about that later. But this is going to be our first test midterm material. We only have two tests. So you'll have all of this information 1.1 through 3.6 on the first test. And then you'll have uh, from uh, the, after October 16th, your next date for section 37 through 48 is December 10th, which is the very last day of classes. In fact, our, our final exam I have scheduled for December 2nd. Why do I have, allow this to go beyond that date? Well, because I figure you may, if you don't already have 100% in each section, you may want to go back and uh, fix some problems in each section to get the homework average as high as it possibly can be. There's really no excuse for not getting a 100% on the homework assignment because I've given infinite attempts on every single question. So you get it wrong, you try it again. You get it wrong, you try it again. As soon as you get it right, you have 100% credit on that problem. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, okay, yeah, but if I don't know how to do it, I don't know how to do it, no matter how many attempts, you will not have to work a single problem that I haven't first done myself. So you'll notice in the, on, on the content page, I'll have Achieve videos, and I'll also have scan of my work from Achieve. I go through and work all of these assignments just as if I were a student, and I post my work and I post a video of me explaining my work for every problem. So if you get stuck on any problem, all you have to do is go in and look and see what I've done on mine. And it should uh, be sufficient help to explain to you how that individual problem has worked. Uh, okay, so all of this is in here. 
you'll notice I'm trying to be as flexible as I possibly can be with these due dates. Uh, you really only have the three, the training date of September 4th, just to make sure you know how to use the system, uh, the midterm date of October 16th, and the end of the semester date of December 10th. At that point, of course, grades have to be determined, so you can't go beyond that. Uh, but I'm trying to make this class as flexible as possible. So if you have other classes that are going to have, you know, deadlines on a specific date and stuff, and probably weekly deadlines for a lot of classes, it allows you to focus on those and then flexibly think about when you want to spend time with our class. Of course, you will have to spend time with our class too, or else you won't be able to get our amount of work done. Now, whenever we... Uh, go back to our D2L page here, or Brightspace page. Let me go back to the table of contents here. So absolute first thing, just like I just said, please click on the student registration link and make sure that the Achieve book works for you. After you hit that student registration link the first time, then in order to access Achieve, and you may just want to bookmark it and go directly there, or you can go in here and this is supposed to be the link that you choose in the future to go to Achieve. And if you just want to be led directly to the Achieve uh, ebook, you can hit that link and it'll take you there. Uh, and I, those links will stay there for the remainder of the course. Let me go back to the beginning of the semester information now. And on our course policy sheet. So, uh, up first, like I've already said a few times, my name is Jonathan Lamb. Uh, this class is fall 2020. You see I have my um, email address and cell phone number here. What I would ask is if you're going to contact me on the cell phone, which is absolutely fine, uh, it's probably, probably better if you text me the first time that you try to contact me. And of course, when you text me, if it's the first time, let me know who you are and what class you're a part of. Uh, I used to get these random texts all the time from my students, like, are we having a test tomorrow? No name, no class, no, no anything. So I would always just text back, yes. I figured it was better for them to be prepared than not, since I didn't know who they were, or what class they were in. Uh, now, of course, I'll, I'll try not to be mean like that. Uh, I'll try to resist the urge. Uh, but for our class, please, please uh, uh, send me a text the first time. I typically don't answer my phone if I don't recognize what number it's from. So uh, I'll need you to text me and let me know who you are the first time. And then after that, you can contact me however you like. Email is also absolutely fine. It goes to my phone uh, as well. So I can answer e either one pretty quickly. Uh, the Pellissippi office is pretty irrelevant this semester. Um, I won't be there. In fact, I haven't been in my office since March. Uh, so that just tells you how rarely I'm on campus, sadly. Uh, now, as far as connecting with me on Zoom, which I hope you do, uh, and, and let me explain just a minute. This class, I'm trying to plan totally asynchronous asynchronously. What that means is that I don't force you to ever meet with me at any specific time. So while I encourage it and I certainly want to be here uh, for you to help, uh, you're, you don't have to meet with me. Uh, I have my lectures. I will have them posted on YouTube. I will have every single homework assignment worked through by me also posted on YouTube that should lead you through the class uh, absolutely fine. And in fact, uh, having the homework solutions explained out on there is really more than I would you know, do for my traditional classes. Usually I like them to uh, kind of suffer through the homework and figure it out for themselves. Uh, and, and even on these with the Achieve, I would rather you kind of try to figure it out for yourself first, but then of course, when you have trouble, you can refer to my videos. Uh, but I recommend against using them as a crutch. Don't look at the video every single problem uh, to see that, uh, what the answer needs to be. Uh, now, as far as contacting me, like I was starting to say here with the Zoom sessions, uh, you can uh, connect with either one of these. It's the exact same Zoom, Zoom account. If you want to type it out, 
It's zoom.us backslash my, and then it's math is cool because, hey, math is cool. Uh, that's my Zoom account. Uh, or if you want to dial in, it's 864-406-5811. I'll try to keep those uh, for the entire semester so those do not change. Uh, you could probably, especially if you're just going to follow along from your computer, just click these and it'll take you right to my uh, Zoom waiting room. Now, with that said, I do have a waiting room on my account. Pellissippi professors are supposed to use waiting rooms so we don't have anybody Zoom bombing us and trying to be disruptive in our sessions. Uh, because of that, uh, you need to be looking on your Zoom account as, as you go in, and I need to recognize your name. Don't use some slang name, slang name that I won't recognize. And especially here at the beginning, it's probably best if you put your name and the class. So uh, what, whatever your Pellissippi username or your Pellissippi identification name is, and then Math1910, uh, that would really help me out and uh, uh, help me realize that you need to be admitted fr from from the, the the waiting room. If I see somebody with you know just a um, a name of you know sw swaggy at something, uh, I'm not going to let them in because I don't recognize the name or uh, you know Auto Tech. Uh, I, I think that was somebody that was in my waiting room yesterday. Auto Tech. I I don't know who that is, so I don't let them in. Uh, so if you are trying to get into a Zoom session and you're thinking, well, gosh, why is he not admitting me? I would check your username uh, and that's most likely the reason why. The Calculus One optional help sessions will be from 1130 to 1230 on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, Tuesday, Thursdays, I will be using for video creation time and content creation time for all three of my classes. Well, actually I have five classes, but three different classes, uh, pre-calculus, uh, calculus one and calculus two this semester. Uh, so uh, there's, I have two of the pre-calculus and two of the calc one classes. Uh, now with the calc one classes, um, uh, you'll, you can easily meet with me on those times. That's when you have priority. Uh, so even if any of my other students attend that session, I give priority to calc one questions. Uh, so that's that's the time I really have set aside to help you out. Uh, however, uh, if you want to log on at other times, I'll still admit you to the sessions. Uh, I have a 10 to 11 o'clock Calc 2 session and a 1 to 2 o'clock pre-calculus session. Now, the way that will work is if I have, like, for example, in the pre-calculus session, if I have pre-calculus students asking pre-calculus questions, I will help them first. But I'm, I'm imagining, especially after the first couple of weeks in the semester, uh, there's probably going to be few people each session. Uh, so I, wish I should have more than enough time to help other students, even outside of the ones that that session is specifically targeted for. Uh, but just keep in mind, if I do have students in those other sessions, like a pre-calculus student in the pre-calculus help session, or a Calc 2 student in the Calc 2 help sessions, I give them priority. But then if, if I don't have any Calc 2 students in that uh, asking a question, I'll be glad to work Calc 1 questions. Um, now, uh, as far as our course catalog description, this is single variable calculus for students majoring in science, math, engineering, and computer science. And we usually have some who are just taking it for, for fun too. Uh, typically I'll have a few business majors in here who want to take this class as opposed to the ridiculously much easier Math 1830, the basic calculus and modeling. Boo! It doesn't have any of the fun trig that we do in this class. Can you imagine taking all these derivatives and doing the fun stuff that we're going to do, but not having any trigonometric or logarithmic functions? Like, no! That would be terrible! So, fortunately, some of those students are smart enough to just say, hey, I want to take the full-fledged calculus class, Math 1910, as opposed to that wussy Math 1830 class. And if you're one of those, I'm very proud to have you in this class. Uh, now, 
uh, and keep in mind, this class can always, always substitute for that. So later on, if you decide, well, hey, I don't want to be an engineering major after all, and you want to major in business, this class can easily substitute for Math 1830 since we do everything and more that they do in that class. Uh, now, as far as the book, uh, you can uh, have your textbook, the, the, and I don't know why I put free there. That's, that's bad. It's, it's not free. Uh, it doesn't cost you any more. Uh, I'll, I'll delete that free. Uh, it's just that you've already paid for it. Uh, when, and I, I do know why that free was there. I was doing a program with the publisher in the spring to where my Calc 1 students in the spring got the book for free but they're no longer running that program. So no longer free. Uh, now it is uh, available in the bookstore, uh, the, the loose leaf version for a low $40 fee. Now it's just up to you whether you uh, think that that's necessary or not, because the book is already here. You can see your ebook on this. It's got it for every single chapter that we'll be doing. And of course the whole rest of the book as well. Uh, like we're starting off pre-calculus section 1.1 takes you right to it. Well, come on computer. There we go. Uh, takes you right to the ebook. You can read through their examples and explanations throughout the sections if you wanted. Uh, so all of that's there. I also have uh, my scanned PDF of the book uh, under course content as well. And in fact, let me go ahead and show you that. Oh, didn't like that. Sorry guys, my computer's being very slow. Uh, but when I, when I said that, I also have your book posted right here, all right there. It's a scanned version of each of the chapters and pulls right up. So can you buy the book? You can. Can you easily get by without it? Absolutely, because you have the ebook uh, on the website. You also have the scanned version of the ebook uh, on, on D2L. So both of those are there uh, for you. Uh, let's see. I'll go back to the policy sheet here. And up next, as far as other materials, you are going to need a calculator. I'll just be using my, it won't disappear, my TI-83. I, I use one of the retro thick TI, well, actually TI-84, not TI-83. I, I use one of the older TI-84s uh, that are the thicker with the Mate screen because I, I've worked with a document camera and I found out that the newer, thinner ones have a shiny screen and they just don't display very well under a document camera. So as, as, you're, as you see me doing some of the videos and if you're wondering why I'm using one of the older calculators instead of the nicer new ones, because the nicer new ones just don't work as well with my document camera. So I pulled out my old one and started using it. Uh, it, it still works pretty well. Uh, and any of the 83, 84 calculators are absolutely fine for this class. What's not fine is any of the calculators that have the computer algebra system on them. Uh, that's like the TI-8992, some of the Inspire computer algebra systems. It has to, it can, it can be a TI Inspire, but if it says Inspire CAS, it's not going to be allowed. Now, you might be thinking, well, he's not going to know what I'm using uh, because I'm at home. And you're right, I, I won't know. But you're not doing yourself any favors if you're using one of those calculators. And on test dates, I certainly will forbid them. I'll go around looking uh, and I'll also have the testing center checking your calculator to make sure it's not one that should not be used. Uh, so. Uh, it's probably a best idea to never use them for this class. Help resources, like I've said several times, I hope I'm your first point of contact. I'm eager to help ensure your success in this class. No one's going to know more about how I want you to work with problems than I do. So yeah, there's tons of people who are really good at helping students with calculus. 
but none of those people know what I want you to know more than I do. Uh, sometimes, particularly math, you might need a fresh, different perspective. Uh, we have a wonderful academic support center, capable math tutors who can assist with calculus. Several of those math tutors have been in my class in the past. Uh, so uh, they can uh, say, oh yeah, I know Professor Lamb, he'll want you to do it this way and, and, stuff, and, and such. You can hit this link to go to the tutor schedule. Uh, now, of course, that's all virtual tutoring this fall. Uh, they will be tutoring either using Microsoft Teams or some of them will use Zoom like, like I use. I find Zoom much better than Microsoft Teams myself, uh, but it's probably just a personal preference. Um, now, as far as the internet, uh, of course, most everyone's heard of Khan Academy. And if you haven't, where have you been? Uh, it's the best free resource and the only reason it's free is because Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation pour tons of money into that each year and and I'm when I say tons of million or tons of money I don't just mean millions I mean billions of money into that website to make sure that it's on the cutting edge of technology for uh, many different subjects uh, it's better than a lot of um, private you know um, uh, resources that some of the best universities calculus material wouldn't match up to what they have on Khan Academy uh, so it is a fantastic resource a lot of teachers would just link you there uh, for, for each of the lessons uh, and I have no problem with you going there to learn content but the reason I don't just do that and instead I create my own content I don't want you to ever think I'm a lazy professor. I'm not just some professor that's going to say, yeah, go to this site, go to this site, go to this site. That's pure laziness. I want you to know I will teach every single section, every bit of content, every homework problem you're asked to do. I will never ask, ask you to do something I haven't done and explained myself. I take pride in my job and I try to do it to the best of my ability. I'm not just going to depend upon other resources. But with that said, that's a fantastic other resource. Uh, another uh, wonderful other resource that I think he's probably the most brilliant cal cal calculus professor in the nation is a guy named Paul at, at, at Lamar University. I've linked you to his Calculus One online notes there. Uh, they are pretty high level so if, if you're thinking what is the most challenging calculus one curriculum uh you might look at his content he, he he gets up there and does some pretty impressive stuff with his uh with his calc one classes uh now of course on our bright space page and i haven't said all of these yet uh, but with this class again remember as you log in the first day you're gonna be like wow there's hmm, not not a lot there yet uh there will be uh, i'm working on this class as we go throughout the semester and like i say here i will work very hard to stay ahead of you and post video lectures along with homework videos for every section i'll never ask you to work a problem i have not first done myself or done and explained myself i'll also post my book homework solutions uh, and the author solutions manual and PowerPoint notes for each section. We'll discuss every one of those options there. Uh, like I've said earlier, uh, this class is asynchronous, so there is really no attendance policy. Uh, you do not have to meet me on Zoom for the Zoom sessions to be counted uh, present for the class. All I'll do is just check in from time to time to make sure you're doing the achieve assignments and probably just send you an email if I think you're getting behind or something like that. Uh, but if I see you're on track, I'm, I'm not gonna bother you. I'll, I'll have you contact me if and when you need it. Uh, now, as far as the homework goes, uh, all homework assigned is going to be on the Achieve platform. There's no other homework other than that. Now, you'll notice I have posted book homework problems that that I've done in the past with my traditional classes. Those book homework problems are not an assignment for this class. I just left it on there as a resource if you wanted to see, hmm, I wonder what, a, what, what problems he would have done out of the book and how he would have approached them. It's there if you want it. Uh, but our problems are on the Achieve platform. Uh, you'll see your ebook there as well. You'll have an assignment for every single section and that's what I was showing you 
back here, go to my course and then assignments, view all. Like I said, there's an assignment for every section. You have your training assignment. You have the assignments that are due October 16th. That's 1-1 through 3.6. And then you have the assignments that's due by December 10th, 3.7 through 4.8. So all of those are on there. Every problem in each assignment allows infinite attempts, or I should have said unlimited attempts. Hopefully you're not working them an infinite number of times. Uh, you'll be able to check my achieve work to see uh, me do an, an example of every similar problem. So whenever you're thinking, wow, he's going to do all the problems for me. Well, it's not quite that uh, generous. Uh, my problems will be slightly different. Yours will be a regenerated version of mine. Every single student will see a different problem uh, for each problem on achieve, but it's just a regenerative different. If, if my problem uses uh, like 2x minus 7, yours might be 5x plus 3, uh, but it's going to be the same type of problem. If mine says factor, yours will say factor. If mine says take the derivative, yours will say take the derivative. So it's going to be the same concepts, just slightly different numbers in them. Now, the average of all of your achieved assignments together, it's going to be worth 50% of your class grade there. Uh, now, as far as the other 50%, we're going to have two tests, a midterm on October 9th and a final exam on December 2nd. Now, those are the dates that the tests will be if you meet with me. Uh, every test I give, I will give a meeting time with me and a location. It's going to be in Goins Auditorium. That'll be on our pacing chart. Um, but then... Uh, I also give you the ability to take them in any testing center over a broader range of time. So we'll, we'll talk about that on the pacing guide. Uh, ways that you can ensure that you make a good grade in this class, please stay on track. Uh, I give you a great amount of freedom and flexibility, but don't abuse that. Uh, what I'm afraid is that some of you are going to be lackadaisical and wait to start you know, working on the assignments until late September and then try to cram uh, to get the assignments done for the first test. That's not a wise strategy. So even though I'm giving you the freedom and flexibility, you need to be responsible enough to know, okay, I'll try to stay at, at least approximately on track. If you get a week behind here and there, no big deal. You can always try to catch up the next week. So I'm not saying you have to be exactly on schedule, but you need to be at least uh, realistically close. Uh, so like I say here, it's not an effective strategy. A lot of students will just say, hey, yeah, it'll work for me. I'm, I'm used to writing papers an hour before the deadline. I can do the same thing with math. Probably not. Uh, but now, you know, I'm, I'm not going to penalize you if it does work for you, but I'm just telling you, it's probably not going to be wise. Students who uh, work diligently have essentially no chance of not doing well in this class. Uh, with hard work, 50% of your grade in this class should be an automatic 100. So when I said each of those problems on Achieve had, have unlimited attempts, and the fact that I'm going to be working every single problem myself and posting a video of me explaining how it works, that should mean that there's no excuse for you not to get every one of those problems right. Uh, now, um, with that, that means 50% uh, of your grade should be an automatic 100. So even if you don't do, you know, fantastic work on my two tests, the midterm and final exam, you should be pretty set for a solid grade in this class. Uh, you could make an 80 average on my two uh, tests and still finish the class with a 90 B plus. Uh, and of course, if you make a 90 average on my tests, uh, along with the achieve work, you should have a 95 A. Uh, I guess you would need at least an 86 on average on my two tests and then perfect grades on achieve. You'd have a 93A. Uh, the A in this class does start at a 93. It's the math department grading scale. And then 88 to 92 is a B plus. Uh, 83 to 87 is a B. 78 to 82 is a C plus. 70 to 77 is a C. Anything in the 60s is a D and below 60 is an F. Now, and I don't just say this casually at the end. Please, if you're beginning to struggle, you need to see me immediately for help. 
I'm very willing to help students if they are willing to put in the work. Uh, so I don't really want to hear from that student who's a month behind in the assignments because they haven't bothered to uh, look at any of them. Uh, but if you're doing your part, I will do more than my part to make sure that you're fine in this class. You're gonna have many resources available to help if you need them. I hope that you use them to your advantage and do really well in this class. Now, the next page that I listed in the beginning of semester is our class calendar. And the class calendar, it's really just a recommended pacing guide. So once again, please remember I said this class is asynchronous. I'm not going to be forcing you to meet with me live. Uh, I want you to get, I want to give you as much flexibility as possible for you to study uh, or, or for you to plan your study and work. Um, so there are no mandatory weekly meetings. Instead, below is the recommended pacing you should follow to maintain the needed pace. You're welcome to work ahead. You can also work more slowly, assuming you can catch up with the material due by the midterm and at the end of the semester. We'll have those two tests. I'll have review materials and review videos to help prepare you to review for those tests. So uh, for both the midterm and final exam, I'll do a practice midterm and post videos of me working the problems on the practice midterm online. Uh, same thing for the final exam. There will be no surprises uh, as far as the midterm and final exam. You will know the exact types of questions I'm going to ask you and you'll see my solutions to those types of questions. Uh, now, at any time, let me know if you have any questions. Again, I provide my phone number there, my email address. Uh, please remember, I'll never ask you to work any assigned problems. I've not first done myself. If when you run into any difficulty working and achieve assignment, refer to my videos of me working each problem. Your assignment's just gonna be a slightly regenerated version of mine. So now, the, the, the first week of class, of course, I'm wanting you to watch this uh, introduction video. You should also watch my pre-calculus review lecture. So instead of doing a lesson for every single one of the sections in chapter one, we have 1.1 through 1.7. So that's supposed to cover our pre-calculus. Instead of doing a video for every one of the sections, I just did a pre-calculus review. And then there's assignments for each one of the sections, 1.1 all the way through 1.7. I've already worked every single one of the Achieve assignments, 1.1 one, one through 1, except none of them are long. I think each of them took me about a page apiece. Uh, so 1.1 one, one through 1.7, one, they're all already posted online. I have a scan of my work and a video posting of me doing the work on Achieve for each of those sections. Uh, you, you'll notice week two, the week of October 31st, I expect you to watch my 2.1 lecture. Uh, so for every section after chapter one, there will be a class lecture. There'll be a class lecture for 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, 2.4, all the way through 4.8. Each of those I'll do a video lecture for, just as if I was teaching the, the, the course in class. I use my document camera just as I would in the classroom, and I try to keep it all, all, all the content just like I would uh, do in a normal classroom setting. Uh, so you can watch all of those, and as you watch those, uh, let me go to that just real quickly. As, as you watch it, you can see the videos here. Now, the Achieve Help videos that I have, the Achieve Homework videos, I have them broken down by chapter, the chapter one. So let's say, for example, you're working the 1.4 assignment, which gets into trig, and you have a question about how one of the problems has worked, and you can just say, well, all I have to do is click on that video there. It'll take you right to it. And you can see it took me 25 minutes to work this assignment. Uh, I'll turn down the volume here. And you can see that it goes through. And the way I try to do these videos is uh, I'll show the achieve screen on the calculator. And then I'll show a little document camera image and explain or try to explain the work as I'm doing as, as whatever it required for me to do in the, in the particular problem. So hopefully you'll find that very helpful 
and how that the problems are solved out. And I try to make these videos as crisp and clear as possible. You'll notice that the resolution goes all the way up to 1440p HD. So the image should be nice and crisp for each of them. So you should be able to make out the work that I'm doing. Uh, now, other than that, so there's, there, there will be those videos for every single section. Now keep in mind, I'm working the class as you are. I'm just going to stay ahead of you. Notice I have videos through section 2.1 done right now. Uh, you, you will see those increase very quickly as, as, as the class starts. Uh, now, as far as the lecture videos, like I said, I just have one lecture video for all of chapter one. And then right now, all I have for chapter two is the 2.1. I have a few of the later ones already done, uh, but by the time you get to section 2.2, 2.3, 2.4, I will already have a lecture video done for you. Uh, and again, those are just done on my document camera with me explaining out what's, what's expected within the sections. Now, if you, uh, oh, and, let me go back to the videos just a second. With those lecture videos uh, and, and even the Achieve Help videos, uh, whenever you're doing those, I do want you to access them within the Brightspace page, uh, like, like I'm clicking on it right now. And the reason I want you to click on them here is because I can only Welcome tell- to your first lecture video for the Calculus One class. Unless the factor calls in I can only tell that you're watching the videos if you click the links within D2L and watch them inside of here. You can still maximize them on your screen and all of that stuff. So all of that, just, just like it's on YouTube. Uh, what I had some students do, and, I, and I'd rather you not, is they would go into YouTube and just go into my YouTube channel and watch the videos from there. The problem with that is I don't know that you're watching it. I would, uh, within, within D2L, it gives me the ability to see which videos you've watched and exactly how much of each video you've watched. Now, am I going to be fussing at you if you don't watch all the videos or if you skip minutes on them? No, but what it does give me the ability to do is if a student contacts me at midterm and just says, gosh, I don't know how to do any of this. I don't know what's going on. I, I can just go back into their account and see, well, I can see, I can see why you don't know what's going on. You haven't watched any of my videos, whether it's a lecture video or an achieve help video, you haven't viewed any of them. So this gives me the ability to see what students are watching and what students are not. If you click the links within uh, Brightspace in order to do that. And again, it also tells me if you've watched the whole thing or not. So uh, just, please, please use the links within here as opposed to going directly to YouTube. Uh, up next, uh, scan of my Achieve work. Uh, now, there is no requirement uh, to watch me and all of the Achieve videos. What if you just said, gosh, I just, I just need to see and worked out the problem. I don't need to hear the whole explanation. Let me go to that section 1.4 again that gets into the trig. Well, maybe. Click the link, John. There we go. So all I would have to do, and like if you're having problems with a particular question in there, like, ooh, gorgeous number six. They tell us that the tangent of theta is equal to four thirds. And if the tangent of theta is four thirds, tell me what the sine, the secant, and the cotangent is. So you'll see what I did here is I just set up a trig triangle and said, well, the tangent of theta is four thirds means that inside of a right triangle, the side opposite theta has to be four and the side adjacent to theta has to be three. Since one of the definitions of the tangent, since one of the definitions of the tangent of any angle is that it's the ratio of the opposite side of a triangle to the adjacent side of a triangle. Now, of course, once I label those two, of course, the hypotenuse is five and it enables you to find your sign by just saying opposite over hypotenuse, secant would be hypotenuse over adjacent, and cotangent would be adjacent over opposite. Gorgeous problem. But if you don't need to hear a video of me explaining that, you can just go to this sheet and figure it out uh, and then go to your assignment on Achieve and work the problem. Uh, now, let's see. 
The next thing, uh, I've talked about the lecture videos, the scan of my achieve notes, filled in lecture notes for each of the sections. If you, uh, like after you watch a lecture and you just say, well, I don't wanna have to refer back to the video, what was that problem he did in it? Uh, you could easily just go to the PDF scan that I'll have for each of these in here and it'll show you the problems, whether it's uh, like I just, I was just talking about SOHCAHTOA right trig triangle trigonometry with that tangent function there, or if it's solving out an exponential or a logarithmic equation uh, as far as our pre-calculus review, all of that would be there. This is just what I do in the video. I wanted to post a, a copy of um, what I go through and do in the video for you, just so you could have the notes filled out rather than having to take notes yourself. Uh, there are blank notes, so if it helps you to follow along and write down as I write down in the videos, they're there. Uh, that's typically what I've asked my traditional classes to do. I would ask them to print these out, and then as I would work problems on the document camera and write it out up there, they would write it out on their notes. Uh, so if that works for you, that's absolutely fine. Now, you'll see also PowerPoint notes. These are done by the author. Uh, a lot of teachers would use these PowerPoint notes to teach their class. Uh, again, I don't because I don't want to be lazy. Uh, and so uh, I prefer not to use them, but that does not mean that these notes are not fantastic notes. Uh, if you want to see uh, a more probably um, structured set of notes uh, that are more lengthy than my notes for the sections. You could go into here and hear the explanations uh, for each of the chapters in there. Of course, this is the pre-calculus review, so it's even getting very basic with linear functions and that's your point slope formula there and stuff like that. So that is another resource you can use if you choose to use it. Uh, certainly no requirement. I just put it there as a resource for you. Uh, the scan of your book right here, every one of the chapters that we're going to cover is scanned out. Now, if you wanted to see what I would have done for the traditional book homework assignment, you can click on this and see, you, you can tell uh, the chapter one, I just put all as one assignment for each of the sections just because it was not very long. And so I did the 1.1, the 1.2 homework, the one point two homework actually took me two pages, the 1.3 homework and so forth. These are problems out of the physical textbook in each of the sections that I worked out. Uh, that's not an assignment for us in this class. All of our assignments are on Achieve, but I just left it there if you wanted it as, as a resource. There's also the book solutions manual for each of the chapters as a, as a resource there for you. Uh, and derivative graphing websites, we'll, we'll talk more about that later in the semester. You really don't need to worry about that until at least chapter three, so I won't discuss it now in the introduction video. Um, but now, going back to my beginning of semester papers, class calendar, please keep in mind now this pacing chart. Uh, I'm, I'm expecting you to work usually uh, other than the first week, which is very very quick sections in chapter one uh, where I ask you to do five. Other than that, it's usually about two or three sections a week, uh, which is not going to be bad workload at all. Uh, so once you get through section 3.6 at the end of the week of September 28th, at that point you would start wanting to review for your first test. I will have review materials posted online. Like I said, I'll have a practice test that you can try to work through problem by problem. And then you'll be able to compare your solutions with solutions that I have posted along with video solutions that I have posted for that practice test. And if you do well on that practice test, you should do extremely well on my actual in-class test. Now, that in-class test, the first one is the midterm. It's going to be on October 9th on a Friday, it'll be at 9 a.m. in Goins 136, that's Goins Auditorium. Uh, so uh, all of my classes are huge classes. I don't have less than uh, 32 students in any class. So 
because of that, I can't test in just a normal classroom due to social distancing not allowing us to put that many students in a classroom. So I'll be testing in Goins Auditorium, which seats 150 normally. Uh, and uh, they have nice pull-out chairs that are padded that have the little uh, table that you can put out. It should be a pretty good testing environment. And I can let everyone sit every other seat or every third seat in there. Shouldn't be any problem at all. Now, if you would prefer not to test with me, and I would prefer you to test with me, but if you would rather have more flexibility as to when you test, notice that first test, the midterm, will also be in the testing center between October 5th and October 14th. Now, there's a strong advantage to testing with me. If you test with me, you're going to get your grade uh, that weekend. So I'll either have a grade posted by the October 10th or October 11th. You will have it done. On the other hand, if you test in the testing center, even if you test October 14th, I will not get those tests until at least October 16th. They wait till the end date and then they will send those tests to me through the mail. So it'll be at least October 16th before I even get your testing center test. And then after that, it'll take me a few days to have them graded. Uh, so if you don't mind slow feedback, you can use the testing centers. If you want more quick feedback, you can test with me in Goins Auditorium. So those are, are, are your two uh, uh, options. Uh, everyone gets to use the testing center uh, if, if you want. Uh, but I, of course, everyone can also, I would prefer you to test with me. And as far as those testing centers, remember Division Street is closed this semester. Uh, so you would have to take it on the main campus, Pellissippi campus. Uh, you could use the Blount County campus, Magnolia campus testing center, or even a few of you may be way out in the Strawberry Plains area. Uh, and you could use their testing center if you like. Uh, after that first midterm, you can see the schedule for the rest of the semester. It continues about two to three sections per week. Uh, and then we'll finish up with a final exam on December 2nd, also at 9 a.m. in Goins Auditorium. I'll test the same way both times. Uh, and again, if you would prefer to use the testing center, I'll leave that test in there between December 1st and December 8th. Uh, now, I would warn you, for those that are planning to use the testing center, please don't wait until the last day. So let's say you decide to take your midterm in the testing center and you show up on October 14th. Well, what if there's a problem? What if they are all filled up and they can't let you take the test? I would be extremely annoyed if somebody waited till the very last day to take the test and then for whatever reason couldn't take it. Um, I, that, that, that would not be an ideal scenario. So what I'm asking you is if, if you are going to take it in the testing center, give yourself a few days uh, before the end of that period. So if it's in that first one, try going at least by October uh, 12th or at the latest the 13th. Uh, don't wait till that last day because if something, if, if some problem arises, You'll have a backup date to come to go in and test. Same thing with the December 1st through 8th. Don't wait till the 8th, the very last day to test. Try testing a few days before that in the testing center. So while that looks like a really good range of days there, you shouldn't wait till the very end. I'm just afraid that something could happen that might prevent you, whether it's your car breaking down or whether it's the testing center being full, some problem could arise uh, and there probably would be a penalty uh, in, under, in, in most cases. I'm not saying I wouldn't let you take the test at all, uh, but barring some you know, serious circumstance, there would probably be a penalty. Uh, okay, uh, so now I think I've explained everything as far as how the class is going to run. Uh, if you do have any questions, please let me know. Uh, keep in mind, again, I'm allowing a great amount of freedom and flexibility in this class, but don't let that cause you to be complacent and fall behind. Uh, at any time, you can contact me with questions. I'll get back with you very, very quickly. Uh, and most importantly, I, I, I hope it's very obvious that I am rooting for your success this semester. I will do everything I can to make sure that 
this class is a good class for you. Uh, if you do all the problems on Achieve, you should have a very solid Calculus One foundation. Uh, and keep in mind, not everything is posted, so don't look at this and say, uh, geez, uh, he hasn't done a lot of the stuff yet. Well, that's because I'll be working the class with you. Uh, so this is not something that I have just already done ahead of time. I'll be doing it with you, but I promise I will stay ahead of your pace. Uh, all right, guys. Uh, have a great semester, and please let me know if there's anything I haven't addressed. I'll be glad to help out in any way. Take care.